Ouch! What's up everyone? I uh, want to do a video about oiling systems, specifically dry sump oiling systems. Uh, they're a little bit unusual. You'll, you'll see them on a lot of you know, high-end race cars and you'll see them on uh, a few production cars. I think Corvettes, some Corvettes have them, probably some Ferraris, and I think most Porsches have them. Um, but anyway, uh, so wet system, everyone's kind of familiar with. That's where the oil pans beneath the engine where the oil is stored. There's a pickup in there that uh, sucks up the oil and then there's uh, the oil pump is self-contained within the engine usually driven by the timing chain or belt um, but today we're going to talk about dry sump systems and what that is and what kind of the benefits and cons are so let me grab my tripod and I'll uh, show you the chalkboard okay so benefits cons uh, so on a dry sump system um, you have a lot less chance of getting oil starvation so uh, on a wet sump system, that oil can slosh around inside the pan. The pickup won't be able to uh, grab oil. It will suck air, you'll lose oil pressure, and you can damage your engine. But with a dry sump system, since your oil is no longer stored underneath the engine, it's stored in a large like uh, external kind of column tank. Um, it's a lot, and the pickup's at the bottom, so it's a lot more difficult for the oil to slosh away from that pickup since it has so much uh, oil stacked up on top of it. Um, so that's that's the, probably the biggest benefit to to a, a dry sump system, but there's also some other benefits. Um, so the other one is scavenging. So a dry sump oil pump does two things. It uh, not only pressurizes the oil through the engine, but it also uh, pulls a vacuum or sucks the oil out of the out of the engine, um, which is, it can be. Uh, what it can do is it can pull the air and all that oil mist out of the crankcase. So as your your engine's turning 9,000, 10,000 RPM or whatever. Uh, with a wet sump system, it has to fight all of that air resistance and um, there's, there's obviously oil vapor and stuff inside the crankcase. So if it sucks all of that out, it has a lot less air resistance and oil to fight through so it can rotate more freely. Um, so that's, you can get more power basically. Um, but w with that, uh, it also kind of sucks the oil off the down bottom side of the piston. So if you're building a dry sump motor, it's recommended to have uh, DLC coated wrist pins just for a little extra insurance since there won't be as much oil sitting on the, the wrist pin. Um, so increased capacity too. So my, I think the stock S2000 holds five quarts of oil. Um, in a dry sump system, you can hold, depending on how big your oil tank is, you can hold uh, a lot more. So I think I'm holding seven and a half quarts now with, with my total system. So uh, more oil means uh, uh, you, you won't break down the oil as fast because there's more of it and it's also got a little bit more thermal capacity so you should have uh, everything else kept the same. Your oil temperature should be lower as well. Um, another benefit is they can be adjustable. So some pumps, mo almost every pump has uh, the ability to adjust oil pressure. So if you uh, want more or less oil pressure, you just have to turn an adjuster basically. And then some pumps also have the ability to adjust vacuum as well. So you, you can um, uh, adjust how much vacuum you're pulling on the engine. Because something I didn't mention here is, uh, yes, you can pull a ton of vacuum if your pump is strong enough. But if you're running like factory seals, which I am, they recommend not going over 15 inches of mercury of that vacuum. Because um, if, you, if you go over that, you can start pulling, uh, pulling the seals I guess inward and causing them to leak or damage, etc. Uh, so I, I am going to install a vacuum regulator that I'll, I'll show you in a second. But uh, basically, that um, has, is like a mechanical valve that regulates how much vacuum the uh, pump can pull. Um, and uh, I'm going to run 12 inches of mercury just to be on the safe side. Uh, so another benefit is so you no longer have that tall or that, that large oil sump at the bottom on a wet sump system. So it's, it's basically just a flat pan. So you save, um, I don't know, possibly four inches or so. So you can lower your engine down a little bit more without having to worry about it hitting anything because of that uh, short pan. Okay, so that's the benefits. Um, some cons of the, of the dry sump. Um, I think number one is the packaging. So you'll see that these tanks are really large. Uh, I have a two gallon tank and it's it's freaking huge so finding where to put that and then you have basically everything's external right so now you have to find out where to put everything 
uh, opposed to it all being a self-contained unit. So just packaging it is pretty difficult. Um, another one, these things are not cheap. If you've been interested in a dry sump, you probably know that they're, they're pretty expensive. Um, and then just the com complexity. Uh, you know, the, the factory oiling system was all designed by Honda and it works great, you know, up to a certain point. But when you start getting in the slicks and all that stuff, it, it becomes a, sort of becoming an issue, but uh, just the complexity. So figuring out how this, all this routes and stuff, um, I spent a lot of time with daily engineering, which is who made my dry sump, um, just trying to figure out uh, what the optimal way was for everything. So let's go through uh, just kind of the, the routing on the chalkboard, and then I'll show you on my car. And when I show you in my car, I'll show you some of the, uh, uh, I guess, tips, I guess, for routing it and what size oil line and how to route the lines and stuff. So, um, so anyway, starting at the oil tank. So this is where... Um, all your oil is stored. Uh, it can be basically anywhere in the car, but when the engine is running, it's not, it's not completely filled. It's actually about two-thirds of the way filled. Um, so anyway, it gets kind of sucked out by the pump and, and obviously gravity pushes it as well. Um, from there, I go straight to the oil cooler, and then uh, from the oil cooler, I go into the engine. Um, this pump, uh, or this setup is actually a little bit unusual for most dry sumps in that Usually, uh, you will go in where the factory oil filter is, and you'll do a, a remote mount oil filter somewhere in this line. But the way they urge designs, I think, spec'd out this kit, they wanted to be able to use the factory um, oil filter location, which uh, does the same thing. This once it goes into the engine and the pan, it goes straight to the oil filter. So it's it's kind of a unusual, but basically the same thing. Um, so once it goes into its engine, it does its thing, it lubricates the engine, and then uh, gets sucked out by the pump. And this is actually done through galleyways, but depending on what system you have, it can be a line or lines, or it can be just uh, the galleyways within the pan itself. So anyway, it gets sucked out of the engine, it pulls that vacuum we were talking about, and then it gets pushed back to the oil tank. And then uh, Daily Engineering recommends putting an inline filter. Uh, and I think the benefit of this inline filter is just to um, say you, you do blow an engine, you're on a race team, um, and you have to replace an engine. If you have a filter here, it catches everything from going in the oil tank. So you no longer have to clean uh, this side of the oil system. You just have to replace the engine and, and the filter in this line. So it's, it's just a, a way to keep the other half of the system clean if you do damage, blow up your engine or something, and there's fragments in the oil. Um, and then, so off of the oil tank, you will have a catch can breather uh, with a breather, um, and that just uh, catches any blow by or whatever in the uh, in the catch can. Um, so on my car, since it's NA and there won't be a ton of blow by, uh, I will be using a vacuum regulator on the valve cover. Uh, and like I said earlier, this just makes sure I'm not getting too much vacuum and, and damaging my seals. Uh, but if you were running a very high uh, boost turbo car, what you would do then, uh, where you're not really concerned about pulling a vacuum, or maybe the pump just simply isn't strong enough to pull enough vacuum because you're getting so much blow by, you know, in like an 800 horsepower, say, car, you will then vent uh, to your oil tank. Um, that'll catch some of the blow by and the oil mist uh, and put it back in the system instead of just venting straight to a catch can and then you'll just continue to use your catch can with a breather off of the oil tank. So it's just a smarter way to make sure that you capture, try to keep as much oil in the system opposed to going into the catch can. All right, so that is basically uh, how, it's, how it's kind of the high level, how it's set up. And I'm gonna show you on my car so you can see uh, what it looks like in real life and I'll, and I'll show you some of the things I was talking about. So let me, let me switch this. All right, so there's my engine. Let's start at the oil tank, same way we did on the chalkboard. Um, so you can run, uh, usually they recommend at least a two gallon if you're doing road racing. Um, two and a half would be even, even better probably. You just get a little bit taller uh, column of oil over the pickup, but um, so as you can see, it's a very large tank. I put mine under the dashboard um, for two reasons, basically because then the lines are pretty short. It goes straight to the engine. Um, and then uh, I still have space for a passenger seat. So uh, you can't put them other places. If you, if you don't ever plan on having a passenger, you can put 
uh, one where the passenger seat would go. A lot of people put them in the in the trunk um, just to help weight distribution. Downside of that is uh, then you have to have really long lines and um, you can have some pressure drop due to lines. So uh, with that restriction with the, and stuff with the longer line, um, there's more chance of, of cavitation and stuff like that. But if you use a Dash 16 line, uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. But uh, so that's something to consider when you're, you're using your feed line. So the oil does get sucked from the pump. Uh, the, the pump sucks the oil from the tank and that suction can actually cause some hoses to collapse. So you want to make sure you look at the rating of vacuum that can be that, th that your hoses can withstand. So, and that's mainly just important for the, the feed line there. Um, so anyway, I put mine under the tank. Um, another an important piece of, or not that important, but uh, something to consider is when you're routing this feed line, you don't really want it to go back up. Um, you definitely want to stay the line to stay below uh, the oil line, um, but. I recommend, and so does Daily, uh, just keeping the the uh, line level or slight, going slightly downhill from where it comes out of the tank. That way, you don't ever have to worry about developing air in the in the line. Um, so anyway, my line goes through the firewall and then comes out through the firewall, and then it's kind of that line that comes from way back where, um, as you can see, I'm kind of close to my exhaust, so. I put this DEI uh, heat wrap around it just to help uh, any um, heat getting into the oil. Uh, so then it comes comes to that line, it goes into the pump down here. Um, then the pump uh, pumps it to my oil cooler, so through through this line. Uh, and oil cooler, mine's mounted um, on the back side of the radiator. Um, from the research I've done, you can do either or, it doesn't really matter. Um, but so those lines there are just dash 12, and I stuck with the, brain, the stainless braided hose just because uh, that's what the feed line needed to be for the vacuum rating. Um, and yeah, so anyway, so it comes out of the oil cooler, and this is where I was saying the system is a little bit unusual in that it goes straight into the, the dry sump kind of pan. Um, usually there'll be a filter in this line and then it'll go in where your factory filter was. But for some reason, they wanted to use the, the factory oil filter location. Uh, so the oil will go into the pan and go straight to the oil filter. But uh, yeah, so I'm using, continue to use the Honda filter and then I have a, a good place to put a uh, oil temp sensor at the sandwich plate. Um, so anyway, the oil goes in, gets filtered and then does its thing inside the engine and then the Pump sucks it out, scavenges it out, uh, comes out this line, again wrapped it just for safety, um, comes up here, and then this is that inline filter. Um, I have a Peterson one. Uh, yeah, not required, but good idea. Uh, and then it goes back to the firewall, uh, comes to the firewall, and then that's this line here that returns to the tank. Notice how it comes in tangent to the tank, which causes the oil to swirl and any kind of air in the system will get uh, pushed out the top. Um, so that's basically the, the cycle. You can't really see my uh, vent line, but um, basically I, I made this little cover and you just slide it open and you'll be able to get to the top of the tank, which is where the, the vent line comes off of. And then I have the hole right here and it goes into uh, this catch can with a breather. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, changing the oil is a little bit different now. Um, you're going to be filling the oil at the tank and then draining it at the bottom of the tank. Um, I have a hole in my floor that I'll just run a hose through. Um, uh, so lastly, here is that, that vacuum regulator I was talking about. Again, it's made by Peterson. Um, I'm making a dry sump specific uh, uh, valve cover for F motors and uh, it's going to have provisions to add one of these vacuum regulators. It'll sit somewhere around here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, I guess just to mention, so if you are running uh, a very high boost application where you're going to have so much blow by that the pump can't suck all that up, and then you will vent to your tank. You can get, you can get tanks that have multiple uh, inlets and then 
again, you'll have the same vent coming off the tank going to your breather. Let me flip this around. Okay, so that's basically it. Hopefully I didn't forget anything, I probably did. Uh, but again, ask me in the comments, um, I'll do my best to answer. Uh, this is my first time doing one of these, but I spent a lot of time kind of researching it and the optimal way to run it and everything, so I could possibly help you. Um, anyway, uh, thank you again for watching, and uh, if you don't mind, like it, subscribe it, that stuff, and then uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I put all my, my uh, small updates on there and stuff like that, so um, yeah, thanks.